Are you guys looking to inject some excitement into your life? Maybe fuel your passion or possibly even filter the toxicity out of your life? <laughs> well, don't you worry, because in this video, I'm gonna give you all the deets. The details are as follows. We have fuel pumps. Oh wait, no. Fuel pumps, fuel pressure regulators, spin-on fuel filter, and most importantly, a surge tank setup. But this is an in-fuel cell surge tank setup. Look at that. Hey, yo. Before this video begins, I want to address your comments about the last video and the fuel tank real quick. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the last video. You'll figure it out pretty quickly. I think you guys are right. I think running the fuel lines underneath the drive shaft, probably a bad idea. I think I could make it safe enough, but I recognize that that's the same mindset I had with the Eclipse. I was like, I'm right and I'm gonna prove it. And then I wasn't. So I'm not, I'm not gonna run that again. The simplest idea that I could think of is to still run an external line, but run it on the top. I can make a very small fuel hanger with just a nice, small, cheap fuel pump on the other side and have that pump fuel up and over the drive, or yeah, up and over the fuel tank into the other side. Boom, fuel will always be filling up the surge tank. Thank you guys for your comments and uh, let's finish this fuel tank. So, we have to get this ready to go into the fuel tank. In order to do that, a couple fuel pumps have to go in the bottom part here. All the fittings and hoses and wiring has to go in. This we can set aside for now. This is his own little enclosed unit. Holds two liters of fuel as well as three, up to three fuel pumps. One of the holes for the fuel pump is empty. So how this works, the fuel pump that goes into the empty hole sucks fuel off the bottom of the fuel tank, puts it into this enclosed little capsule, and then the other three fuel pumps that are in this capsule then pressurize the engine. This stays full no matter what happens so that there's no fuel slosh. You know, you can't have fuel slosh if it's full with fuel. On our setup, we're just running one fill pump and one pressurizing pump because uh, 300 horsepower. <laughs> We got a DW300 for a fill pump and a DW300 for a pressurized pump. Now I read instructions and you watch the magic ensue. So now we can wire it up. So left, stage one, stage two. All right, it's all wired up. Oh yeah. Now this is ready to go in. You know, Dishworks makes a lot of really cool products, but their surge tanks have always just been a step above. Thing looks so sweet. It was really easy to put together and it's got more potential. So I can put two more fuel pumps in it if I want. Now, the only thing that's a little unfortunate is that it does not have a backing plate. So we have to be able to bolt this to the fuel cell without a backing plate, which means we have to drill and tap the fuel cell. But the fuel cell is very thin, so I don't know if it's going to work. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try it. If it doesn't work, then I'll have to purchase some thick aluminum. And then with that aluminum, I will build a different kind of mounting plate that's drilled and tapped to this and then weld it to the top of the fuel cell. So let's see how tight I can get this. That's pretty tight. Oh yeah, it's pretty tight. And if I keep tightening it though, there we go, and now it's stripped out. But I mean, I got it pretty tight. I think it's fine, brother. There we go. That's yeah, certainly not, not true, there's plenty.
Those are done. And with that, the last tap is done. That took a bit longer than I was expecting, but I think they all went pretty well. They all went in straight. They all look nice. We can't just put it, put the thing in yet because there's a bunch of junk in there. And so with that, the Dishworks surge tank setup is in the fuel cell and ready to rip. Now before we can put the fuel cell back into the truck, we have to finish welding the mounts and just clean some things up. While we're at it, we're also going to go ahead and mount the fuel filter. Right there is where the fuel filter is going to go. The reason why we did it here and not over there, it's easier to maintain. Swap out right before the track and then just reach in, unscrew it. Um, plus the exhaust is gonna be in here. I don't wanna leave as much room for that as possible. So putting this out here is gonna be perfect. The way we ran the fuel times last time is kinda of how we're gonna do it. They're gonna come off the tank. They're gonna go into this filter and then right down the outside of the frame. So it's all nice and right there. I'll build a little shield coming off of the bed that shields this from wheel well debris. Cause you know, don't want another eclipse. And 
with the fuel filter mounted, it was time to work on the drive shaft hoops. Because even though we are not going to be running fuel lines underneath the drive shaft, we still want some drive shaft hoops. So we got our fuel tank put in there and we got our drive shaft hoops now fully welded up with the tube disconnects couplers. And so that's going to fit nicely right there. So what we're going to do is tack the front and rear drive shaft hoop in and then build a cage essentially of some more additional tubes that connect the two. Sick. Let's see, we got our custom drive shaft here. Oh, how beautiful, how, how beautiful is that? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna build some bars that kind of come from this to here to protect the side of the tank from here to here to protect that side of the tank. But I'm not gonna have the fuel lines running down there, so. And look, even with dry shaft hoops, you can take the dry shaft out without removing the hoops, which will be nice. So I, I cut the two pieces for the drive shaft hoop cage, but then realized I didn't have an arbor for the uh, hole saw I needed to notch it. So, um, yeah, not gonna do that right now. Obviously that's just for temporary because the frame's not painted, so we'll have to take all that out. But I um, wanted to make sure it worked. Out. Well, with the X-Brace back in, it's now a complete 
finished back bed section. Once we get the new arbors and once I get the new fuel pump, then we can finish the crossover pump, finish all of the uh, drive shaft hoop stuff and actually get this tank permanently mounted or at least permanently mounted until we have to tear everything down. But while we wait for that stuff to show up in the mail, we're gonna work on other stuff. Well, really in other car, cause we're driving the sleeper Volvo in two weeks. Well, by the time you see this in one week to California and back. Very far trip. So we have to do some things before we do it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for all of your comments about the fuel tank. I'm happy with the new solution that I've devised. If you wanna support the channel, please check out Patreon. That is a big help. And you can get access to videos ahead of schedule plus a free Drift Truck t-shirt. Otherwise, you can check out the other Digi merch that we got. All that stuff is awesome. Thank you guys. I'll see you next one. Peace out.